Hi, this is Kevin at MicroMeasurements. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install our MicroMeasurements weldable strain gauges using MicroMeasurements uh, Model 700 welder. Now, let me talk first about the strain gauges. Uh, this particular series that I have here is LWK, and to show you the back here, these are pre-cabled gauges. They have about 10 inches of a Teflon insulated uh, cable. They're good up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, you can weld these to stainless steel, steel, even titanium are, are probably the most common uses for this type of weldable strain gauge. Now, the advantages of weldable strain gauges are that you, you do very minimal surface preparation, which I'll show you here in a minute. You can also install them uh, in adverse conditions. And there are certain types of sealed weldable gauges that could even be installed underwater if necessary. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, the welder itself. This is the Model 700 welder. Uh, it's uh, got a rechargeable battery, it's portable, and it really is designed for strain gauge welding uh, from the ground up. So it's got the appropriate uh, uh, watt second energy ranges for the type of shim thickness that you'll be using. Uh, it also has a soldering pencil because often in the field with weldable gauges, you're gonna to need to do a little bit of soldering or wiring work, so this is uh, present as well. Now, let me show you how to do this per our Bulletin 131. This is uh, Micromeasurements Instruction Bulletin 131-5. This is attachment techniques for weldable strain gauges and temperature sensors. Now, uh, I'm just gonna describe this by doing, and I'll refer to this document a couple of times. The first question that a lot of customers have is, well, what weld energy do I set this unit for? And the answer is, uh, you determine that really uh, in, in the course of uh, the installation because every package of gauges includes with it a shim. And the purpose of this uh, blank shim is just that, it's to, uh, determine your weld energy. So every package of five gauges is going to have one shim with no strain gauge on it and that's used to determine weld energy. So let me show you how that's done. You basically start at the lowest setting and uh, we're going to do a little bit of surface preparation here. Uh, the surface prep is, is very minimal and we're going to degrease the surface. This is just uh, to make sure that there's nothing present that's gonna cause a ground issue. So I'm gonna use our CSM degreaser. And we'll just make sure that there's no oils or anything on there that's gonna give us a ground issue, which there probably is here. Okay, do that one more time. Okay, now I'm going to uh, use our SCP-1 silicon carbide paper. And this is about all the surface prep that you need to do for a weldable string gauge. Just get a, uh, a bare metal surface. It's gonna give you a good electrical contact with the weldable shim. So very, very minimal. I'm gonna wipe this off one more time. Okay. Model 700 setup is very easy. It has a ground strap, which I'll attach at the uh, end of the steel specimen here. Now I'm going to use my uh, sample shim to set some weld energy. I'm going to put a little bend in it so I can grab a hold of it a little easier. And a little bit away from where I'm going to install the gate, uh, I'll turn the unit on. Got it set to about three watt seconds of energy. Now the hand piece has a rocker in here so that you can actually support it and then press it down with some firm pressure uh, and then squeeze the trigger. That will discharge the welder. But just so you know, you don't have to freehand this. You can rest the hand piece on the specimen and uh, control it very accurately. This welding tip is copper and is about 37, I'm sorry, about 30 thousandths of an inch uh, diameter spherical tip and that's appropriate for welding strain gauges. So to set my weld energy, I'm gonna put this down 
and I just discharged a weld, you can see it really didn't do anything, so I'm going to increase the energy. I'm going to go up to about uh, 10 watt seconds. And this is just a repetitive process. You, know, you might have heard that click. We got a little bit of a, a weld this time. Now what you do is you rip it off. And what you're looking for is to leave a little slug of metal behind, which actually I did. You really can't see it because these are almost microscopic welds, but it looks like I've got the, the right energy set. Let's try it again here. Rip that off, and I feel a little slug of metal left. So again, the, the type of weld energy and weld process that we're doing here this really, really does not modify the surface of the specimen, so this is safe to do on structures. Now that we have the uh, weld energy set appropriately, we're ready to install the strain gauge. So you can use PDT-1 paper drafting tape uh, to hold the gauge in position. So we'll just put a piece of that across it. You could have alignment marks here if they are necessary. Now, per our bulletin here, let me show you some details. What we're going to do first is put a weld at about the gauge center line on each side of the grid, one weld on each side. Then we're going to remove the tape. That'll hold the gauge in position. Once that's done, I'm going to stitch all the way around the grid and uh, about a sixteenth of an inch spacing between welds. And then to finish it, I'll go here and I will uh, put a second row, kind of a zigzag pattern when it's finished. Of also spaced about a sixteenth of an inch apart. The spacing between the zigzags will be about a thirty-second of an inch. And this is an estimate. It doesn't have to be precise. Uh, the idea is to uh, get a uniform set of welds all the way around the circumference of the grid. Very important. You know, sometimes uh, weldable gauges are used incorrectly. I know that sometimes people want to just put welds on either end as if the gauge is going to be pulled in tension. That's, that's incorrect. Uh, to get a really good strain measurement, you want to reproduce the state of stress that's in your steel specimen inside this metal shim. And to do that, you really need to uh, get a close set of welds all the way around the circumference of the strain gauge. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So right, right about the center on the inside, I'm going to produce one weld. And then a second weld. Now that that's held in place, you can remove the tape. And we're just going to continue working out from the center of the grid towards the ends. If you don't hold firm pressure, or if you happen to get on the, uh, the back end of the strain gauge, you'd probably produce a pretty good little spark here. So we're going to work out from the center on both sides. You know, I'm using the handle to support this so it's easy to control. Okay, now that I've worked out from the center along the, the sides, both ends of the strain gauge, I'm going to go ahead and just continue around the circumference until we produce all the welds that are necessary.
Okay, so this is all the welds around the circumference. I'm now going to go around the outside again and kind of stagger them. This should be more towards the outside edge of the shim. So it could be, uh, you know, sub-freezing temperatures outside conditions right now where normally you could not uh, adhesively bond a strain gauge. A weldable strain gauge will allow you to get that measurement uh, with a much friendlier installation in adverse conditions. Okay. So the strain gauge is uh, now welded properly to the steel. The only thing left to do here would be to uh, select and apply a protective coating that would be appropriate for the environment that this might be exposed to. So uh, thank you for your time.